Hey all, uh, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Mike Rock and I'm the used instrument buyer. But also, um, I do some guitar setups as I'm a guitar player, as you guys are too. We're going to go over restringing, and cleaning and uh, some basic setup, twisting the truss rod and making sure the guitar plays at optimal. Okay, so as I feel this guitar, because I'm a guitar player, I can feel the actions a little uncomfortably high and the strings are kind of dead and old. So as I triage my instruments, I discovered that this one needs help pretty much uh, right away. So we'll start with this. We're going to restring the guitar completely. Always make sure that you have all the tools that you need around you when you begin. This apron will help keep you from getting dirty. You probably won't get as dirty setting up as a guitar as you did when you slobbed down your chili lunch in 33 seconds, but uh, it will definitely keep any debris off you. And handy pockets for other tools you might need, like a clip-on tuner, which is essential. Over here I have a basic tool kit, and I have everything that I need to get going. Sometimes the hardest part of the job is finding the tools. Here they all are. I'll begin with changing the strings. Okay guys, so now that I've got the strings taken off it, first thing I want to do is get it a little degunked, right? Now, you know you can't get to that dust between the pickups and between the pickup and the bridge and on the headstock when you got strings on it. So take the opportunity to just clean it up just a little bit. Get the fingerprints off it, make it presentable looking. I know that every single one of you guys out there has tried to clean the dust off between the pickups with strings on it. It's a pain in the neck, right? Okay, so here's how we avoid it. So now we got a little basic cleanup going on on here. And if you have a rosewood board, not an ebony board, not a maple board, not anything but a rosewood board, you can take some lemon oil. Okay, so we only need a little bit of lemon oil on this. We don't want the neck to be swimming in it. It's not good for it. It'll actually, if you make it too wet, it'll make the frets actually loose. So just a little tiny bit on a rag, and you just want to cover the fingerboard with a light sheen of lemon oil. It helps the wood last. It will help when the frets need to come out. It will help the frets secede from the fingerboard without taking bits of wood with it. It's just all in all good to keep every time you change your strings to just apply a little bit of lemon oil. And again, just a drop. If the fingerboard's still wet five minutes later, you put too much on. Just a little bit will do for you. Okay, now I'm sure that every single one of you guys has changed strings before. I just want to cover a basic. First of all, we probably won't need to do much intonation work if we're going from the same gauge of strings to the same gauge of strings. I happen to use a caliper to measure to see that these were nines, even though I knew it was. If you don't have a caliper, pick up the guitar and play it. There's a good chance a seasoned guitar player will be able to tell what gauge your strings are on the guitar just by feeling it. So I'm going to put the same gauge of strings back on this guitar that were on there before. It'll save you a lot of time and effort. Okay, so now I have all the strings off and the guitar cleaned and the fretboard oiled. Now I'm going to begin putting the strings on. I've chosen the correct gauge and I'm beginning to string up. I know you guys know how to do this, but we're just going to go over it one way. If it's a modern Stratocaster like this does, is, the strings just go right through the hole rather than through the top as you would on a vintage tuner. So what I generally do is straighten out the eyelet so it matches up and you kind of have a straight ride here and leave a little bit of slack in that string so that you can get a couple of winds around the post. Helps the string grip. Now I know some of you guys turn and put a loop in it. You can do it that way. What I like to do, which is pretty quick and efficient, is one, run one wrap underneath, which as I turn, you can see I have one wrap just went underneath the string. And as I spin it and turn it, picking up the slack that I left for myself, and come around again, I'll make this wrap go 
go over the string. Kind of pinches the string into place, helps the guitar to stay in tune, and lock that string into place. Now once I have it on there, I clip off the excess, a pair of diagonal pliers, and I've got one string on. Just like those cooking shows, we're going to turn off the camera, I'm going to put the other five strings on, the pot roast will be ready. See you in a minute. Okay, so with a little bit of help from a string winder and five minutes later, I have all six strings on the guitar, roughly tuned to pitch. Now here's where your tuner comes in. A headstock tuner is a great thing to have for this kind of job. Now what you want to do is tune the guitar to pitch. Find where the E is and take the string and stretch it out real good from the bridge all the way to the middle up to the up to the nut and you'll see it's dropped in pitch considerably. So now I want to tune it up again to an E and no higher. Stretch it on again. Stretch it again. Don't worry, you won't break it. And if you do, you'll just get another string. Each time it drops a little less in pitch until it ain't going anywhere. You never want to tune back down flat. You always want to tune up to the note so you don't leave any slack in there. Okay, I'm going to stretch the rest of them and I'll see you in about three minutes. All right, so now we've got a cleaned, neck uh, oiled, and restrung guitar. Strings are stretched, and it's ready to go. So now's the setup part, right? Now's the part where we make it play good. This one has got really high action at the moment. I'll measure it for you real quick. What we've got on the high E string is a little over four millimeters, which is pretty high for a Strat. So most of the times, it's not the bridge that needs to be adjusted. Once the bridge is adjusted and screwed into the right places, it's not going anywhere. Most of the time when you have an action issue, it's because the neck has developed a bow or a back bow when you have a lot of buzzing going on. So when we sight this neck, the correct way to sight a neck is always at one side at a time, straight down this way. And you want to look at the string, which is taut, so it's a straight edge, versus the fingerboard. And I can see there's a huge dip in here, right here. Now I want to check the other side too, and I see the same exact thing on that side. So the neck's not twisted, it's equally bowed on both sides. If you try and sight down the middle, uh, the optical illusion of the fatter strings at the bottom to the thinner ones at the top will make it look a little wavy to you. So always sight from one side to the other and always from the headstock side. Okay, so some of you guys have tightened truss rods before, some of you guys haven't. Don't be afraid, it's not going to bite you, you're not going to break it. So, I want to tighten this rod to make the neck flat. Right now it's curved back. They call that concave. 
convex would be when it's high in the middle. So I'm going to take that concave bow and bring it flat by seating this truss rod wrench in there real good so I know it's tight. Turning to the right, I can feel the rod gripping and tightening. And I'm going to turn it while I eyeball it and wait for that fingerboard to start to look flat and parallel to the low E string, which is, which is tuned to pitch, so it's a straight edge. So as I see this return to a flat, and there we go. So now I've got a neck that has got, just got a slight bit of relief in it now. It's not all the way flat. If you notice, the guitar has got a buzz in the middle, or the strings won't play. It means you've tightened it too much and you've got a convex bow. You don't want to over tighten it. Just tighten it to where it gets pretty close to flat. And now you've got a much more playable instrument. That's where your low action comes from, more than adjusting the bridge. The bridge pretty much stays put. The neck has a tendency to move as the weather changes. All right, so now we've got a guitar that's slightly out of tune because I've moved the neck angle. So we can tune back up. Now we've got a guitar that plays much, much better. Plays in tune, it's intonated well because it was intonated well before I touched it. So the intonation remains the same. No ghost is coming to turn these knobs. You'll notice that your intonation starts to go out on a guitar as the strings begin to get old. Chances are you don't need to adjust these at all after they've been adjusted correctly the first time if you don't change your strings. It's all in adjusting the neck. It's all in keeping the strings clean once it's basically done correctly the first time. So what we now have is a completely gig-ready guitar. Okay, we're gonna move on to a Gibson and uh, go over a couple more things. Stick with me. Okay, not much different here, folks. This one happens to be a Gibson. And um, we know if it's a new, American-made Gibson USA guitar. It's got from the factory tens on it. Um, but let's say this one's used and we're not sure. Chances are it's probably tens. Um, they're going to feel a little more taut on a Les Paul because it's got a shorter scale and a little bit of a break angle here and here, which gives the strings a tauter feel. But um, so we've got tens here, and we're going to repeat the operation here. So I'll tune right back in. Okay, so now I've done the same treatment to this instrument. I've changed the strings, took off the old dead tens, put on a new set of tens, and I've polished it up. I got a little bit of fingerprints on it while I was working on it. But uh, I took all the dust out from over here and all the hard to, spot, hard to reach spots and on the headstock, and I stretched the strings out and put some, put some uh, lemon oil on the neck and brought it up a little, it's a little darker now. So now the first thing we always do after it's tuned to pitch and stretched Sight the neck. Once again, that's where almost all the problems are going to be. If a guitarist has a basic setup, that should stay pretty much the same. One thing you got to watch out for on a Gibson, though, is 
is this going to fall off when the strings are off it? Because there's nothing to hold it down. Just want to make sure all that stuff stays put and you should have no issues. So now I'm going to sight the neck. And it is about as flat as flat can be. Now you can get away with that sometimes on a Gibson Custom Shop or, or a, another instrument of very high caliber where the frets are very even. But sometimes you'll get a little choke. So if we want to take some of that out, which is up to taste too, you make sure you get your Gibson truss rod wrench. So after I undo the bell head cover and carefully put my screw down somewhere I can find it, because honestly the hardest part of the job is finding the lost screw. Now, because this is so flat without any relief at all, I'm actually going to put this truss rod wrench on here and tighten it down with my thumb, make sure it's real snug so it doesn't pop off and kind of strip out the, the nut on there. And I'm just going to turn it and loosen it up just a hair and get rid of some of those choked notes in there. But the flatter the neck is, generally the lower the action is. Now that note that was choked out a little before now rings nicely. I'm checking the playability up the neck and the action is low and smooth and even and just right. Somebody would love to pick up this guitar and play it. It's, it's ready to go. It'll impress you. On a Sunday, I'll sit down and restring five of my guitars and kind of bond with them. It's a good experience. Um, basically tweaking nuts, changing strings, cleaning them up a little bit, and if necessary, we might have to set the intonation a little bit. If you have a problem with the guitar where it's still not playing quite right, it might be a job for your tech. A simple setup on a guitar that has no broken features or anything really badly wrong with it should be an easy setup. Some, something that has a more profound problem may be a job for your tech. But it should be easy to grab a guitar off the wall, do a quick setup and clean up on it. And like I said, when they come right out of the box, they're usually set up for you. You might just want to change the neck, change the strings and adjust the neck a little bit. And before you know it, you'll be through every guitar on your wall and ready to start up again. All right, so that's it for today and have a great day.